Hi there, my name is Bella and welcome to the 100 Acre Wool Podcast, where I talk about all the things I've been making recently, usually having to do with knitting, sewing, or other fiber arts. I have a lot of knitting to show you this week, so let's get into it. You can also find me on Instagram or Ravelry at 100 Acre Wool. I am usually more active on Instagram every week, showing you updates of my current projects. And also for Ravelry, I think I do a pretty good job of updating all of my current projects, as well as the yarn that I'm using for the projects, some notes, things like that. So make sure to follow me on those places as well. All right, my first finished object for this week. I showed you this last time. I cast this on last week, and I actually finished it this week. It is the Marivelle Du Jour hat um, that is originally designed by Alice Starmore. I kind of took inspiration from her design to make my own version, so I'll show you what it looks like. This is how it came out. Let me see, I can put it over my face so it'll, it'll focus. Hopefully you can see the detail there. I'll put a photo here too, so you can see. So I really am in love with how it came out. I am kind of obsessed with it. I made this as a Christmas gift, so I'm definitely gonna give it away still to the person that I originally made it for but I just love it so much. I'm definitely gonna make my own version as well. Um, I used Drops Alpaca yarn for this, and there's eight colors in here, so I had to buy eight different skeins of yarn. Um, so I still have a lot left over of each color, so I can definitely make an entirely, you know, another hat or more. I mean, I think I used only like, I don't know, like a fourth of the skein, for each for of all of them so like I could make three more hats <laughs> maybe anyways um, I'm gonna make myself one too uh, so I really love how this came out and like I said before I took inspiration from Alice stars Alice Starmore's pattern um, I didn't actually use her pattern for this so I kind of made my own chart based off of hers just from looking at photos of the hat online um, didn't have any sort of clue, like the stitch count, um, you know, how many stitches I would need to cast on. I knew the yarn that she used was her own Hibridian, I think it's the two ply. I'm actually not even sure if it's the two ply or the three ply. I just guessed that it's the two ply. But anyways, yeah, so I didn't use her yarn for this. I used drops. Um, the whole reason that I took inspiration from hers and didn't actually use her pattern was because you would have to, in order to get the pattern itself, You'd have to buy the kit that includes the pattern, um, the yarns, and everything. And her kit was only available with the matching poncho. Um, and I didn't really want to make the poncho because I was just envisioning this gift would be just the hat. So I just kind of made my own version. And I honestly really love <laughs> my version. I think the colors are definitely, I mean, they're more my style. But anyways... So I really like how it came out. And there was this little nubby thingy at the top. I don't even know what these are called, <laughs> but it's kind of a, it's a cute little nubby. And I didn't know how to make these because I didn't know what they were called. So I just kind of thought, okay, what if I do a small I cord, um, really, really short, tiny I cord. So that's what I did for this. I think I did just like five stitches of an I cord and then just did it super short. I mean, there's only a couple rows in this. And then I just seamed it onto the top of the hat at the end. Um, so that worked out fine, I think. Um, if anybody knows what these are called, <laughs> let me know. But I, yeah, I just made it up. <laughs> and I like how it came out, so that's fine. Um, so it's in a circle shape right now. You'll be able to see it's like a you know, perfect circle. I actually blocked this on a plate. <laughs> I don't know if that's the way you're supposed to do it. There's probably, you know, hat blockers that you are supposed to use or whatever. Um, but I don't have anything like that. And it was kind of, when I was knitting it before I blocked it, it was kind of tight. My, I mean, I, I'm not like my gauge was pretty tight, but you know, before you block something, the stitches aren't, you know, relaxed yet. So when I blocked it, I, I did a wet blocking, I washed it and got it all soaking wet and then stretched it around a 10 inch plate um, and then just left it there to dry. And I think that worked out really well. I mean, it's like staying in this circle shape. So yeah, 
I think that worked out well. And it kind of like creates like when you wear it, when you put it on, I'll put a picture of me wearing it here. Um, it kind of creates like a beret, sort of a tam look, which I think the hat was in, intentionally, or like it's supposed to be a tam kind of a design. So yeah, I like how it came out. Um, so hopefully you can see the sides here. This is what the sides look like. And I have yet to finish weaving in all of the ends. I talked about that last time. Thank you for leaving comments. Um, now I know what to do about these ends so that I don't need to do what I'm doing now again because it's just taking so long to weave these in after the fact. Um, so I'll show you a little bit of the inside here. So hopefully, I'll put a close-up photo probably here as well, but hopefully you can see all of the floats. I wove in my floats as I went, um, so it's really like smooth and there's nothing that anything would get caught on. It worked out well. Um, so yeah, lots of ends to still weave in. I still gotta do that. So it's not 100% finished, but this will be a Christmas gift, so I still have a week to finish these up and trim them off. So yeah, I really like how this came out. It's super soft because it's alpaca, so you know, when you put it on your head, it's, it's nice and warm, but not itchy, which I know some wool yarns can be a little bit itchy for the head. So this one is nice. Um, so yeah, I'm, I just, I'll say it again. I'm just obsessed with how this came out. So yeah, let me get into now the next finished object that I made this week. All right. The next finished object is a puppy sweater. Um, I showed you the yarn for this that I was going to use last week. And I cast this on this week. I think it, I cast it on last Saturday and I finished it a couple of days ago. So it's been, it was a really, really quick make. <laughs> um, I used, here's, let me show you what it looks like. <laughs> so here is what it looks like. I'll probably get a closer up photo and put it on the side. But that's what it looks like. Um, so there's some cable detail down the center back here. So this is this is the back, and this is kind of the tummy area. And then there's these cute little arms um, with some ribbing at the at the edges. And then the bottom section here, and it kind of it has some um, short row shaping for the back. So this is kind of the lower belly lower belly section and then the back is here where the tail would be. Um, so I made this for as a Christmas gift as well. So I made this for a little puppy named Nellie. She is a, we call her a Pugwawa, um, but I guess technically it would be called a Chug. She's a mix between a Pug and a Chihuahua. So she's like a small Pug is what she looks like. Yeah, I guess technically they call them Chugs. But that doesn't sound nice. Like, who wants to call their dog a chug? I don't know. It just we call her Pugwawa, or we say that her name, her type is a Pugwawa. Um, but yeah, her name is Nellie. So that's who this is for. The yarn that I used for this is Rico Essentials Aran Weight yarn. Um, I think the pattern called for worsted, but I used Aran Weight. I learned a little bit of something new also on this pattern. Um, if you can see down the center here between the cables, there's this cool little ridge of knit stitches. Um, this is a knit one below, which I've never done before. And it was so scary. I was like, wait, I'm dropping a stitch here, right? If you've ever done a knit, one, knit one below, then you may know what I'm talking about. But um, I think it gave a really cute kind of detailing here. Um, so I really like how that came out. Um, so how the pattern is worked is top down. So you cast on at the top here, um, do some ribbing, and then you work down. It's kind of a raglan construction. So you do some increasing. Oh, I'm going to drop this. <laughs> you do some increasing for the arm, arms shaping here. So you increase that direction. And then eventually you split for the arms. So you, um, you take some stitches put them on, you know, scrap yarn, stitch holder type thing. Um, and then you work the body in the round all the way around down while still doing cabling. And then you do some short row shaping towards the back. 
here's what it will kind of look like while it's on a puppy. <laughs> um, do some short row shaping towards the back and then it finishes off with some more ribbing. So the pattern comes in multiple sizes. Um, so depending on your puppy's size, you can adjust the pattern completely. Um, I think there's five different sizes maybe, going from, you know, really small puppy size. I think it goes down to like 12 inches maybe. I might be wrong. I'm not sure. I'll say if I'm wrong here and I'll put the real size in here if, it, if it's different. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend this pattern if you want to make a puppy sweater for your little puppy or if you know someone who has a puppy and you want to give a gift away. Um, it was really fun to make, so I highly recommend this one. And I'm going to be making another puppy sweater. I'll be casting this, the next one on this coming week. And I'm doing a different pattern for that one just because I want to get my feet wet with a different one and see what that's like. I think it's like fully ribbing and maybe some color work that I'll do. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, so I'll, sh I'll update you guys on that one next week. So I think that's all I have to say about this one. So the next finished object I have to tell you about is kind of like two finished objects, but they're really tiny. So I'll show you what they are right now. Look at how cute! They are tiny sock ornaments. So about the pattern for these, um, I went to the Pasadena, what is it called? Pasadena uh, Stitches SoCal, I think it's called, um, yarn festival last year. And I went to the Yarn Cafe Creations table and they had this cute little Christmas tree with a bunch of like little ornaments like this, little stockings and knitted sweaters and things like that. I just thought they were so adorable and I had to know like how they made those. So I asked them for what the pattern was and they actually made a pattern. So what it's called the 24 Days of Christmas Sock Ornaments. So when you buy the pattern, it includes 24 different sock designs, little cute little ornament designs like this. I just love it so much. It's so much fun. Um, so I've made two of them so far. These are two of the designs. I think I changed the colors a little bit, but they're really, really cute. I think they were intended to be made with, I think the whole, um, the whole pattern was intended to be made with um, yarn advent calendars. I didn't get an advent calendar this year. I just didn't even think about it. So I'm using Jameson and Smith two ply yarn for, to make these and they've been working up super well. Um, so it's kind of a fingering weight yarn if you've never worked with it. Um, it's very wooly and nice. Uh, so these are gonna be so cute. I might give them away as Christmas gifts. Um, I'm not sure. I might just put them on my tree but they've been so quick to make up too. Um, I think they each take took me about maybe like two hours, three hours, a couple hours to make. So it's a really quick, you know, one day project to make one of these. And it's so fun that they're all different patterns, you know, that like you have 24 different designs that you can possibly make. So I just think it's a, a cute, cute, awesome idea. Um, so I'm definitely gonna make more of these. And I actually have another one on the needles right now. Um, but I want to show you the details of each of these first. So I'll talk about this one first. It has a couple cables running down this section. Um, some ribbing at the top. Cute little tiny little cables here. Um, and then the heel was different. I've made, you know, human sized socks before. Um, but the I've never worked with this kind of a heel. I don't even know what it's called. I don't remember what it's called. But it has slip stitches in it. So if you know what that is, <laughs> that's what kind of heel it is. And then it just works down to the toe and it finishes at the toe here. Oh, let me talk about the shape of these. So uh, you can see that they're an actual shape of a, they're, they're in the actual shape of a sock. So when I first like knitted these, they were really scrunchy, you know, before you block something, it's it, it, all the niches, all the knit stitches are really tight and tense. Um, but I wanted these to actually look like socks when I put them on the tree, you know, not just like weird <laughs> knitted blobs. Um, so I was like, well, what am I gonna do? I don't know where to get tiny little sock blockers like this. So I thought I would just make my own. So what I ended up doing was I just got a picture of, you know, a sock blocker online, you know, just like the shape, the outline of it. Um, and then I printed it out, or scaled it down, printed it out, and then I traced it onto some, like a really cheap, like plastic um, cutting mat 
So if you've ever seen those, they're like at the Dollar Tree. You can literally get them for a dollar. And it's just plastic cutting mats that you can just draw on and then cut them out and make any kind of shape you want. So I use it for templates all the time, not just for knitting, but for sewing. And it's a super cheap way to get a really good template or whatever you need. Um, so that's what I'm using for these. So each of them still has the little plastic thing in it. I just cut it below the edging so that you can, so you don't see it popping out the top. Let me try to pull the knitting down so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So that's like the top there. I don't know if you can see this. But yeah, so it, it does a really good job just keeping it in, in its shape. Um, so I just need to add some little yarn like hooks at the top so I can hang it on the tree. But yeah, these have been so fun to make. So let me show you the other little one that I am working on now. So I also cast on a third one of the socks. Um, this is how it's coming along so far. I just cast it on. So it's, I literally only have like the top of the ribbing done. But it's, it's coming along really cute. So look at this. Can you see that? They're on double pointed needles. <laughs> this is my first time ever using double pointed needles. When I was trying to cast on the first one of these, I was like, wait a second, how can I magic loop this? This is so tiny. And I tried it on magic loop, but it was just way too fiddly because it's just so, so small. So I decided to purchase double pointed needles. Here we go. So I just got some Chiagu needles. I totally hated them at first because I didn't understand how to work with them. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to like hold them like this, you know, like I thought it would, you would only be working with the live or with the needles that have stitches on them. So I was trying to like knit it like this. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but that was not working out. And I was like, why is this so fiddly? Like people love double pointed needles. Like I have to be doing this. I have to be doing this incorrectly. So I <laughs> figured out you're supposed to use more than just what's holding the stitches. So once I figured that out, then I actually got into the rhythm of it. Um, and I actually kind of like them now for really tiny things like this. I think I'm going to actually use them more often. I talked about a couple weeks ago having some issues with the top of the hat that I was making, um, how it was kind of fiddly on Magic Loop because it was, you know, just not very many stitches and it was just kind of fumbly to work with. Um, so I think if I had had double pointed needles for that, it would have been a lot easier to do just because it's... I don't know, it's able to keep the shape better of where the stitches are, and I don't know. So I might be getting some more sizing sizes of this. Um, I'm using, what are these? These are size US2, US2, which is 2.75 millimeters, um, which is what the pattern calls for for these little sock ornaments. So I'm having a lot of fun with these. Um, this is also a Jameson and Smith two ply. I thought I would just use Jameson and Smith for all of them to keep them kind of consistent since I don't have an advent calendar that I'm working off of. So these are super fun to work up. Um, I highly recommend the pattern if you celebrate Christmas or I don't know if you just want to make little stockings or give them away as gifts or they're really good like quick, quick gift um, to make up if you don't want to you know spend all the time or the money on you know like an entire hat or something bigger on for somebody to give away. Um, it's a cute little gift idea. This is the only work in progress that I have this week, um, but I have a few little acquisitions to show you now, so I'll get into that. I have something really fun to share with you guys. The knitting pattern designer Ksenia of Life is Cozy is having a test knit for a new pattern that she's going to be putting out January 5th. It's called the Undulation Mitts. I will put a picture here of what they're going to look like. And I am so happy to have been selected to be a test knitter for that test knit. The selection for this test knit happened a couple of weeks ago, but I didn't have any yarn to use for it. It uses a very kind of specific fingering weight yarn. It's a thick, uh, uh, it's a thick fingering but a thin sport weight yarn that you should use for it. And I really wanted to be as close to what the pattern calls for for this as possible. Um, I usually purchase yarn based on the pattern that I'm going to make. So I don't really buy things for my stash without a purpose in mind already of what I'm going to make with it. So I don't know if you'll be able to see behind me. <laughs> Here, this is my stash, so it goes up a little bit higher, but um, everything in there is 
yarn that I'm either using for stuff that I am working on currently or that I have extras of from things that I've made in the past or that I already have a pattern in mind that I'm going to use it for. So I don't really have a huge stash. Anyways, I didn't have the yarn that I needed to make the undulation mitts um, for the pattern. So I had to purchase yarn and we all know what the Postal Service is doing right now, taking forever. I know I'm not blaming them at all. I know it's crazy time with the holidays and everything and they are working their butts off doing an awesome job. Um, but you know, it's taking a little bit longer than usual. I'm very grateful for the Postal Service. Um, but so yeah, it took a little bit longer than usual. So I finally got the yarn that I'm gonna use for this pattern. So it is this skein. I will put a closer up image over here so you can see it closer up. But it's kind of this grayish, purpley, mauve color. I really love this color. Um, it is from Expression Fiber Arts, which is not the yarn dyer that the original pattern uses. But the yarn weight, as far as I know, is as pretty spot on as it's gonna get. So yes, this is from Expression Fiber Arts. It is called, so the base name is Luster Sport and the colorway is Allegory. Um, the makeup of what this is made of is 50% superwash merino wool and 50% tencel, which I've never used before. Um, but they say that it gives it the, the shine without having silk in it. It gives it this little sheen to it. So I'm really excited to start working on this. Um, so I'm going to cast this on right away, right after I finish filming this video. <laughs> and I'm going to be working up the test knit. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see updates of how this is coming along because we're we're allowed to show updates of you know how it's looking as we're as we're creating it so follow me on instagram if you want to see updates for that okay so for the last cute little stash acquisition this is not yarn um but it is kind of yarny related because i love burning candles when i knit so as you'll see in the back here this little guy is a wax and wool candle if you've heard of them you probably know that they're awesome if you have any of their candles. Um, if not, then you should definitely check them out when they have shop updates. Um, this is my first time getting wax and wool, but I just love how they smell. So she had a Christmas, you know, holiday related um, update a couple of weeks ago, and I picked up some of her candles. So the ones that I got, the one back here is called Tree Farm. It smells so lovely right now. It's It literally smells like you're walking through like, you know, when you go to buy a Christmas tree, it's just really, really lovely. And the next one that I got is called Christmas Market. This one also smells lovely. It's got a lot of like orangey kind of citrusy um, notes to it. And then also like cinnamon and, you know, all the warm spicy co colors, <laughs> all the warm spicy smells. <laughs> so I really love these and I'm probably going to be getting more when these run out. Yeah, these are going to be my knitting candles, <laughs> my nice little vibe candles. What am I doing, jazz hands? <laughs> Anyways, um, that's all I have to show you guys for this week. Thank you so much for watching if you've gotten to the end of the video, and I hope you have a lovely holidays coming up. I know some holidays have already started, some holidays are soon to come. Um, I just hope you guys are having a lovely time with your families, and best of wishes. I will be posting my next video on Christmas Day, so look out for that. Um, thank you so much for watching again, and have a lovely rest of your day. Bye-bye.